Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, PGC's uh, webinar on uh, effective uh, disaster management. And thank you for joining us, uh, everyone. This is the fourth and our penultimate webinar in the five webinar series, Climate Change in Penang. Uh, the objective of the series is to uh, raise awareness of the serious issues that Penang will be facing if we do not uh, tackle climate change problems and also things that we need to do to adapt Penang to uh, face the threats of climate change. The other objective is also to generate discussions among the public, among policymakers, among researchers about what to do to protect us. Uh, just before I, uh, I move on to introducing the four uh, presenters, I will be talking a little bit about how uh, housekeeping rules. So it, when everyone else is, when the presenters are presenting, so we'll be muting everyone else. Uh, and also, uh, if you want to stop your video, that is also fine, uh, apart from the person who's presenting, obviously. Mm. And you can ask questions, uh, typing the questions in the chat box. So we'll be collecting questions throughout the whole sessions. And after the four presenters have presented uh, their slides, we will be directing the questions to the presenters. So if you know who you want to ask, you can put it down there. This, this question is for Mr. Ran or uh, Mr. Said. For example, and then the uh, uh, PPTs, all the presenters' PowerPoints will be shared uh, with all the registered participants after the webinar, and also we'll be putting up the whole session of the webinar on uh, PGC's YouTube uh, channel. And also, uh, if there's any te technical issues, uh, which is not uncommon, uh, if your line drops, if our line drops, Please do not panic, you know, use the link to, to get back in and we will still be here. And lastly, the webinar is conducted uh, in dual language. So we are happy for you to talk in Malay or in, in English. And now I'd like to very briefly uh, introduce the four presenters uh, that we have here. I would like to thank you again, uh, thank them again for joining us today. So first we will have uh, Mr. Imran Afandi. Uh, from the Bagian Kemak Pengurusan of the Jabat Setia Usaha Kerajaan Negeri Pulau Pinang. So Thank Mr. You. Imran will uh, uh, inform us of uh, what is the current situation, uh, what are the um, pr processes that we have at the moment to deal with disaster management and very importantly I think maybe uh, giving us a, a bit exciting news about the proposed new disaster management unit that we are hoping that it will be uh, established soon. soon. Yeah. And our second presenter is uh, Dato uh, Sabri Abdul Muluk uh, from uh, NADMA. So he's the, uh, the director of uh, mitigation section. NADMA is the federal agency uh, building with, uh, preparing Malaysia for, for, for disaster management. And third speaker is uh, Mr. Said, Mona Said uh, from uh, Mercy. Uh, Mr. Said has been working very closely with PGC for a while now. We always get their help. Welcome again, Mr. Said, and he will be informing us of uh, the importance of forward looking at, uh, of, of uh, forward planning. So now we know we will be, uh, you know, hit by flood, more flood, more storms, heat waves, and things like that. How how should we take this into account when we do planning? So that we will hear from him uh, the, the importance of planning. And lastly, we have uh, Mr. Tan Ka King from uh, Suchi, Suchi Malaysia. He's uh, part of the disaster relief team. So Suchi is a, a chari charity organization and they do a lot of disaster relief work in Penang. Uh, we will be hearing from him today about the importance of community engagement, not just during disasters, which they do a lot, but also pre-disasters and also importantly post-disasters. How do you build out the resilience of community in case disaster strike again, which we are pretty sure, you know, when it comes to flood, it is a recurring uh, event. So hopefully we will, I hope that all of you will be learning quite a lot uh, like us uh, from this session. So without wasting too much time, I'll pass the baton to um, Mr. Imran. Mr. Yeah, Imran, the, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Uni. Uh, Dato Sabri, uh, Encik Muhammad Said and Mr. Tan, our panelists today. Uh, in Penang, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a motto uh, for disaster, that is disaster don't wait. Okay, 
So uh, in this, uh, in my turn, I, I think I, I will talk in uh, Malay because uh, I think most of the, our views uh, and uh, discussion are in uh, Malay, I think. So, uh, so tuan-tuan dan perempuan, eh, uh, bencana ni, uh, dia tak kira masa, tak kira keadaan. Dia adalah, uh, saya share saya punya ni. Okay. So bencana ni, dia, dia, dia melanda di setiap Uh, pelosok negeri, uh, setiap musim juga ada bercara dan, dan skala yang agak uh, berlainan sepanjang tahun. Uh, jadi uh, kerajaan negeri Pulau Pinang adalah uh, main player dalam uh, dibantu dengan NGO uh, semasa kejadian-kejadian bencana uh, terutama sekali memberi sumber lah, sumber uh, bantuan kepada penduduk yang terjejas kepada, ni, kepada bencana ni. Uh, jadi uh, kenapa perancangan bencana ni penting? Jadi kalau kita lihat uh, tuan-tuan dan puan, uh, ni ada uh, slide yang disediakan oleh uh, saya. Okay, uh, kalau kita lihat, uh, so uh, disaster ni ada bermacam-macam disaster, ada natural disaster, termasuk industrial disaster, ada building collapse, uh, ada aircraft accident, uh, haze atau jerebu juga ada, ada dikira sebagai uh, bencana. Uh, dam reserve ni dan juga pandemik termasuk obat uh, ni lah COVID-19 yang melanda uh, negeri negeri apa negara, uh, dunia ni buat sekarang ni. Okay. Next, di peringkat uh, negeri Pulau Pinang, uh, kita ada tiga, dua uh, peringkat uh, pengurusan uh, bencana negeri. Itu pertama adalah uh, pengurusan bencana peringkat negeri yang dipengurusikan oleh YB Datuk Setiausaha Kerajaan uh, Negeri Pulau Pinang dan uh, yang bawah uh, bawah lagi adalah uh, pengurusan uh, jawatan kuasa pengurusan bencana peringkat daerah. Jadi kalau kita lihat uh, pada slide ni uh, peringkat kedua uh, peringkat pertama di peringkat uh, daerah itu di Pulau Pinang ni kita ada lima daerah. Jadi uh, jika satu bencana ataupun uh, kemalangan itu berlaku di satu daerah dia akan dipengurusikan oleh pegawai daerah masing-masing uh, lah. Dan uh, jika bencana atau kemalangan tu spread ataupun berlaku lebih daripada dua daerah, uh, dia akan melibatkan, ialah dia akan melibatkan uh, tuan-tuan kuasa pengurusan bencana negeri. Uh, Automatik akan bersidang dan akan koordinat lah uh, bantuan-bantuan kepada dua atau tiga uh, daerah yang terjejas di negeri ini. Uh, lepas tu kalau uh, bencana yang uh, terbabit lebih besar daripada dua atau tiga daerah melibatkan dua uh, melibatkan negeri lain. Uh, dia akan uh, otomatik akan uh, pergi kepada jawatan kuasa pengurusan bencana negara yang dipengurusikan oleh uh, ni YB Timbalan Perdana Menteri. Nah, uh, jadi uh, kalau dua negeri terlibat di dalam satu uh, bencana, otomatik dia akan pergi ke jawatan kuasa pengurusan bencana uh, negara. Okey. Seterusnya, ni adalah uh, SOP ataupun carta peng, apa pengendalian bencana di negeri Pulau Pinang di mana kalau kita lihat uh, senarai-senarai uh, bencana yang ni lepas tu kita akan merujuk kepada arahan nombor 20 MKN uh, ataupun uh, uh, itulah, uh, itulah apa dah uh, kita punya main apa ni guideline dalam mengendalikan ni bukan sahaja uh, pejabat sekolah kerajaan Jawa Pinah malah jabatan-jabatan lain yang terlibat dalam pengurusan bencana juga uh, menggunakan menggunakan pakai arahan nombor 20 MKN ni yang telah dibuat pada tahun berapa uh, tapi sampai sekarang masih digunakan pakai Uh, jadi kalau kita lihat uh, di bawahnya adalah itulah peringkat-peringkat uh, yang saya nyatakan tadi di mana peringkat uh, daerah, negeri dan juga uh, negara. Dan juga untuk maklumat tuan-tuan dan puan, uh, walaupun uh, sesuatu bencana itu berlaku di daerah ataupun di negeri, uh, jawatan kuasa yang uh, jabatan-jabatan kerajaan yang terlibat dalam jawatan kuasa itu uh, melibatkan juga jabatan-jabatan uh, negeri dan juga jabatan-jabatan kerajaan seperti uh, jabatan kementerian kesihatan, Jabatan Kerja Raya, Jabatan Kebajikan uh, tapi dipengurusikan oleh YB Dato' SUK Ok, seterusnya uh, ni yang saya maklumkan mak 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 tadi uh, Fire Depa uh, Rescue Department, Bomba, uh, PDRM, Tentera semua terlibat dalam uh, apa ni uh, jawatan kuasa yang uh, uh, maklumkan mak mak tadi sama ada di peringkat daerah ataupun di peringkat uh, negeri Jadi uh, di, uh, di bawah jawatan kuasa ni Uh, kita akan menyelaras uh, sama ada search and rescue, uh, uh, emergency, uh, apa ni, uh, kebajikan, uh, evacuation, logistik dan juga communication. Uh, di samping jabatan-jabatan uh, kerajaan dan juga 
ni kita juga um, uh, melibatkan uh, volunteer volunteer dan juga NGO daripada negeri Pulau Pinang untuk inilah untuk membantu kita. Nah saya ambil contoh yang paling senang adalah di Pulau Pinang ni tuan-tuan dan puan persatuan nasi kandar Pulau Pinang di mana uh, persatuan nasi kan uh, persatuan apa, ni, apa restoran restoran uh, nasi kandar Pulau Pinang ni jika sesuatu bencana uh, melanda negeri Pulau Pinang ni automatik <laughs> orang yang pertama sekali uh, yang akan uh, hulurkan apa uh, bantuan especially dari segi makanan adalah uh, persatuan uh, restoran nasi kandar ni automatik uh, dia akan ni walaupun bencana tu tak sebesar tak melibatkan dua daerah walaupun satu daerah uh, apa ni persatuan ni akan uh, ni dia merupakan NGO lah di negeri ni Okay next uh, ni tuan tuan adalah uh, pengurusan bencana uh, dari yang diambil daripada ni lah yang international punya ni Water uh, Disaster Risk Management uh, di mana dia melibatkan mitigasi uh, persediaan tindak balas dan juga pemulihan jadi kita boleh pergi one by one uh, untuk apa, uh, risk, uh, total risk management ni tapi saya rasa uh, panel-panel selain yang, yang lebih expert uh, dari, dari segi Uh, disaster management ni akan inilah akan uh, mem, mem, memberi inilah akan uh, detail berkenaan apa ni uh, ni tapi di di di, di kerajaan negeri Pulau Pinang uh, uh, mitigasi ni uh, kita banyak melibatkan langkah-langkah untuk mengurangkan lah uh, ketendahan uh, penduduk tak ada kesan bencana uh, apa ni uh, sambil contoh uh, majlis bandar raya Pulau Pinang uh, dia uh, dia sentiasa uh, review ataupun merubah kod-kod bangunan Uh, Kukuhkan struktur bangunan uh, dan lain-lain lah untuk apa ni untuk menjadikan uh, masyarakat apa, penduduk uh, negeri ni uh, lebih berdaya tahan uh, jika berlakunya bencana uh, di mana persediaan ni dah, kita dah dah di negeri Pulau Pinang ni kita fokus kepada memahami bagaimana bagaimana bencana tu dapat beri kesan lah kepada kita punya penduduk uh, uh, termasuk juga latihan-latihan uh, yang melibatkan apa ni melibatkan uh, rakyat juga penduduk Pulau Pinang Uh, kita ada juga beberapa uh, tahun uh, 2019 ada dua kita kita, kita buat uh, apa ni uh, sesi ni uh, di, di da, dua daerah uh, engagement dengan komuniti dan juga penduduk uh, termasuk juga apa ni komuniti uh, bisnes perniagaan uh, dan juga persediaan logistik apabila berlakunya satu bencana tu uh, kemudian respon iaitu tindak balas ni uh, Uh, kita uh, menangani bagaimana keupayaan uh, kerajaan negeri menangani kecelakaan uh, yang ditimbulkan uh, akibat daripada bencana ni lah uh, termasuk apa ni uh, tempat tinggal, makanan, pakaian dan keselamatan kepada apa, victim ataupun mangsa-mangsa uh, bencana tu uh, masa tempoh uh, uh, respons ataupun tindak balas ni berlangsung fokus uh, kita beralih daripada menangani masalah kecemasan segera ni kepada melakukan pembaikan dan juga memulihkan ni lah memulihkan uh, apa yang terjejas kepada uh, bencana, bencana dan akhir sekali adalah recovery pemulihan uh, yang merangkumi semua aspek uh, yang terjejas akibat uh, kesan bencana terhadap masyarakat dan juga rakyat uh, penduduk ni lah uh, negeri ni uh, kalau kita lihat kalau kita tanya apa ni expert uh, dalam uh, total disaster management ni pemulihan ni dia, dia ada dua lah ada yang short term dan juga ada juga long term di mana dua-dua fasa pemulihan ni recovery ni Uh, telah ataupun uh, diambil oleh kerajaan negeri setiap kali berlakunya apa ni uh, bencana di negeri ni. Uh, Okey, seterusnya ah uh, ni tadilah yang uh, saya dah explain uh, dengan detail lagi kita punya uh, preparedness, uh, prevention dan juga mitigation. Uh, uh, untuk mamam uh, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, uh, cabaran terbesar di negeri Pulau Pinang ni adalah pada tanggal 4 dan 5 November 2017 di mana Pulau Pinang telah dilanda apa ni uh, bencana dan juga banjir uh, yang terburuk di negeri inilah uh, di mana uh, pada uh, waktu itu bencana itu telah mengorbankan tujuh uh, nyawa uh, bukan saja hujan uh, uh, turun amat lebat uh, tapi dia turun dalam tempoh 15 jam uh, non stop uh, okey uh, jadi uh, di, di akibat daripada tu dan juga akibat uh, kesinambungan daripada kejadian bencana tsunami pada tahun 2004 pihak uh, meteorological department MMD telah uh, mewujudkan satu tsunami early warning system di beberapa checkpoint di negeri inilah untuk especially di teluk di pantai-pantai yang ada turis dan juga nelayan. Jadi bila kita juga dah buat beberapa apa ni engagement dan juga sesi practical dengan, uh, di tempat yang diletakkan ni 
Dan so far di, difahamkan memang ni lah memang berfungsi dengan baik lah uh, Itu juga ada apa ni, uh, flight forecasting uh, model uh, Info banjir uh, untuk apa, maklumat penduduk uh, Dan juga Malaysia Center of Remote Sensing uh, Department of Environment DOE Dia ada ni lah ada airport index yang boleh kita rujuk jika nak melihat Kadar jerebu di negeri Pulau Pinang Okay, ini adalah uh, flight forecast and warning system yang di uh, ni develop oleh uh, ni, uh, Jabatan Pengairan dan Saliran uh, ni, uh, di negeri ni dia boleh kita ada satu ni lah ada satu website uh, namanya uh, Pening uh, ni kita boleh tengok kita, uh, kita boleh tengok info uh, air ataupun kalau ada hujan kita boleh tengok uh, berapa tinggi yang apa ni yang uh, air sungai tu boleh naik sebab dia dia merupakan satu ni lah satu forecasting ataupun uh, ramalan uh, air sungai tu. Okay, uh, ni tadi saya sebutkan Malaysia Tsunami uh, Early Warning System Okay uh, Dan untuk uh, mak lemah tu dan perempuan uh, Di negeri Pulau Pinang ni kita dah uh, wujudkan satu Apa ni uh, Website uh, yang nama dia Penang Alert Di mana Penang Alert ni merupakan satu uh, one stop center uh, Boleh katakan one stop center uh, Di samping ni lah satu pemakluman kepada penduduk Pulau Pinang uh, Berkenaan situasi-situasi di negeri ni lah dia bukan saja ada amaran ataupun apa ni ataupun makluman sebarang bencana di negeri ni malah dia ada info-info berkenaan uh, banjir uh, tak termasuk ni tak termasuk uh, kesan-kesan lalu lintas uh, pejabat daerah pejabat-pejabat daerah yang kelima-lima pejabat daerah akan nilah akan download ataupun uh, ada akses kepada peneliti alert ni automatik dalam beberapa jam setelah kejadian berlaku pejabat daerah akan upload uh, status terkini uh, di dalam peneliti alert ni So penduduk Pulau Pinang boleh akses dan tengoklah kejadian in case kalau dia nak buat aktiviti pada hari berkenaan dan kita juga ada cadangan untuk mewujudkan satu apps bagi uh, Pening Alert ni memandangkan ataupun ni lah ataupun laman Facebook untuk Pening Alert ni memandangkan kadar pengunjung uh, meningkat uh, dari hari ke hari uh, Ini tadi saya dah, ni lah ni adalah member tu lah uh, ataupun uh, datang kuasa pengurusan bencana negeri yang tadi saya uh, nyatakan tadi yang dipengurusikan oleh uh, YB, Datuk Seterusaha Kerajaan Negeri Pulau Pinang uh, Untuk maklumat tuan-tuan dan perempuan uh, Bagi uh, uh, jawatan kuasa pengurusan negeri Sekretariat adalah uh, pihak APM Ataupun Angkatan Pertahanan Awam uh, Di peringkat daerah dipengurusikan oleh uh, pejabat daerah uh, Dan juga sama juga sekretariat ataupun uh, uh, ni Sekretari bagi jawatan kuasa itu adalah pihak APM daerah Angkatan Pertahanan Awam Daerah Jadi bila sesuatu bencana itu berlaku tu dan perempuan Kita ada on, uh, kita, uh, on scene control post atau OSCP uh, Yang meng, dia membuka satu center uh, Daripada Jabatan Bomba, Jabatan uh, APM yang uh, Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat Yang terlibat secara langsung uh, di tempat uh, kejadian dia akan kontrol dia akan kontak nilah uh, OSCP ni uh, yang uh, yang akan spearhead apa ni uh, nilah uh, ke daerah tu punya ni bantuan dan juga ni dia di mana uh, on scene control post ni diketuai oleh OCPD atau ketua polis uh, daerah dia akan nilah akan implement semua apa ni ataupun koordinat uh, bantuan-bantuan dan juga pertolongan yang diperlukan di tempat yang terjejas tu Okay, uh, ni, um, uh, ni adalah on scene commander di mana di peringkat daerah uh, on scene commander adalah pegawai uh, apa ketua polis daerah di mana jika bencana tu uh, merupakan uh, state level uh, on scene commandernya adalah uh, ketua polis uh, negeri ataupun chief police officer uh, state level. So uh, tuan-tuan dan puan uh, secara kesimpulannya uh, bencana alami adalah uh, satu inilah satu hakikat yang perlu dihadapi oleh semua rakyat uh, Pulau Pinang termasuk dari rakyat Malaysia uh, uh, di peringkat uh, negeri Pulau Pinang ni uh, kami ingin mengucapkan ni lah setinggi-tinggi terima kasih kepada semua pihak yang terlibat secara langsung atau, ataupun tidak kepada Jabatan Kerajaan, agensi uh, sama ada negeri ataupun persekutuan NGO-NGO, uh, uh, MPKK, MPKK di, di, di setiap uh, daerah uh, agensi swasta dan juga seluruh penduduk Pulau Pinang yang ya, bertugas lumus uh, dalam uh, 
uh, membantu ataupun menyelamatkan Pulau Pinang dalam kejadian uh, bencana-bencana yang menimpa negeri ini uh, sama ada taufan ataupun apa ni uh, banjir uh, di samping itu juga kesanggupan uh, kerajaan negeri uh, Pulau Pinang uh, dalam menangani uh, bencana bencana uh, telah membuktikan uh, bahawa uh, kita dah tidak elak ataupun tidak hilang dan tidak sembunyi uh, dan tidak lari dari menghadapi bencana ni malah sentiasa bersama rakyat dalam menghadapi sebarang uh, masalah uh, ya yeah. terima kasih uh. okey ada tu syami thank you very much mr ran and uh, for your detailed presentation and also for sticking to the time that's that's great thank you for giving us a <laughs> Yeah, you know, a, okay. a clear picture of what's going on uh, when uh, during a disaster, and uh, I think we, we will also give you some questions during the Q and A time about yeah, yeah, sure. you know mm. some uh, as we know some proposal uh, to the state government in terms of enhancing the disaster management in terms of focusing on data collection, planning, as well as community engagement. So we will come back to okay. you. Q&A. Thank you again for, for your sharing. And next, we will go to uh, Dr. Ayar Ayar Sabri from uh, NADMA. Ayar Sabri will uh, en uh, enlighten us on the, the role of NADMA, but also more importantly, there are some recent updates and rearrangements within NADMA that have been taking place over the last one or two years. So it would be really good to hear from you, Dato, and also what you think this, the role of the state, state government is, how to enhance uh, our role at the state government level to uh, increase the effectiveness of disaster management and, and prevention. Thank you, Mr. Imran. Uh, Dato, uh, Dato, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Doctor. So I would like to share the screen now. So everybody can see? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum, Salam Jatra, and very good morning to our Honorable Moderator, uh, Dr. Ng Singwe from Penang Green Council, to all of us, uh, and also our beloved audience in the webinar called Climate Change in Penang, Effective Disaster Management. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to the BDC especially, to uh, invite me as one of the speakers into the webinar, which is much important, not to the local, but to our nation. So sorry about this slide. Okay, uh, for my presentation, I would like to break into five. First of all, uh, on, on the introduction itself, then second one on the disaster in Malaysia, then we go for the disaster risk management, the way forward and the closing remark. But the most imp important content is about the way forward because I'm discussing with Dr. Ng, he want us to advise the state government how to fit in the gap when you have a disaster in the state. So introduction, uh, as, as mentioned by my colleague uh, Saru Imran just now, in the year 2004, Malaysia faced a very monsoon flood affecting several states, especially the Kelantan. So in the event, there are about uh, 400, 500,000 roughly uh, people affected which cost about 2.58 billion in losses, including the damages to the infrastructure. And because of that event, in the year 2015, the Cabinet of Malaysia agreed on the establishment of the NAMA. I think not many know about NAMA, so I think this is the right time I'm going to promote about NAMA. It, there is a National Disaster Management Agency, and the short form is NAMA. Then we was officially formed on the 1st October 2015. So basically, NAMA has about 11 uh, roles. So one of them is uh, the, the national focal point for the disaster uh, management. Then the second one is to formulate the Malaysian National Disaster Management Policy. I think this is quite important because on the developed country, most of the country has this policy on disaster management. Then the third one is on the to regulate the implementation of that uh, policy. 
The fourth one is to coordinate the disaster risk reduction initiative. Then the fifth one is to coordinate the disaster release exercise, as mentioned our first speaker just now. Then uh, the sixth one is more to the spearhead the public awareness training education program. I think this is quite important. Normally, we try to educate this community which uh, stay in the disaster prone area. The second one is to carry out the after action review. I think uh, this is important because normally after disaster, we need to uh, do the post-mortem. What really happened to the disaster and the impact to the people itself. The number eight is to manage the disaster release trust fund because in Namal we have this uh, release fund which was uh, provided by the federal government to use during the emergency period. Nine is on the, we are also a secretariat to the National Disaster Management Committee. Then the, the number 10 is to governize and lead the nation uh, HADA mission. And the last one, we have our uh, smart team, especially during the critical uh, critical disaster happen in our country. And also not to forget, we have this National Disaster Command Center, or we call it NDCC. We was located somewhere near Pemperjaya in uh, Pulau Meranti. And the, the function of this uh, NDCC is to help the disaster management and the flow of the information so that the, to ensure the proper coordination in the term of preparedness, operation and recovery. So normally what really happened uh, during the daily observation, we will give early warning in terms of this weather, river level, air pollution index, a tidal, local and global disaster to this uh, agency in the state. The, the, we call it the notice of disaster preparedness operation. Then after that, during disaster, we will come up with the preliminary report on disaster and our KPI is four hours of the current situation report. So with that, uh, we have a common center. I think quite big. I think if you have opportunity, we can arrange for the service to at least know what really happened in the common center. <laughs> but not to forget, uh, in the global scenario, we have this uh, UNDP, and we, that, that in UNDP, we have uh, climate change adaptation, then we, UNDRR, we have disaster risk reduction, we call it uh, Sendai framework, and also the SDG. I think uh, those people involved in the disaster, they really know about the standard that's been used by other countries throughout the world. Then uh, as for NAMA, we really support this uh, climate change and disaster resilience based on the three. Just now, as I mentioned, the Sendai, the Paris, and also the SDG. And for the local support, it's the most important. It really required a like, local or state vision to implement on the ground by implementing those uh, shared prosperity vision 2030. And so Penang also have their own vision, Penang 2030 vision, with the complement of this uh, Pidang such a plan and technical uh, guidance from the technical agency. So by integrating this policy, it will help the state government to adapt the impact of the climate change and reduce the risk just uh, uh, and also to support the res resilient uh, support recovery, recovery system. So this effort are the path towards the sustainable development that is called uh, risk informed and resilient. I think the term resilience is quite familiar to us. And uh, Sendai and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change also provide a clear mandate to increase the coherent country approaches to the climate disaster destruction. I think every, every year we have a target and for the Sendai framework, normally we have a seven targets. But uh, I just want to highlight on this target that uh, we related to us is on the target uh, D, which is more on the reduced disaster damage to the critical infrastructure. And also uh, target F, more on the development of the international cooperation of, for the us to develop those, uh, we call this the policy. Eh? And also the target G is 
to increase the availability and access to the multi-hazard early warning system and disaster risk management. I think uh, when you deal with this, so you know what are the standards are being used by those uh, organizations, especially the United Nations. So back to the chapter disaster amnesia, I think uh, this is just a flashback of what really happened in the previous year. For example, the worst flood in the 1975 in KL, then coming 1966, 19, uh, under the tropical grade in Sabah, and also tsunami in uh, 2004, including Penang. And also we have this uh, North East Monsoon, then we have the Highland Tower, the National uh, White Haze, Rana Earthquake, Red Beast Outbreak, and not to forget, as mentioned by my colleague just now, the worst uh, flood condition in the Penang 2017. But uh, for your information, I was the state the ID director during the event with our former CM, Sadara uh, Lingua Eng. So we really have those uh, valuable experience what really happened during that time. I think Sadara Imran was not at the time, right? Okay. Uh, back to the disaster management, I think uh, this one was uh, mentioned by first speaker about the level one, level two, level three. So I don't think I'm going to mention it again. But to me, uh, this committee is really important. That we in Nama, we really, uh, really hope that this committee were working well. So far, they have given a good impression in terms of the response during a disaster and also after disaster. I think this is also the same slide that we share with the first speaker. I think uh, better we skip. So for your information, uh, there is one term uh, for you all to know. Uh, we call it uh, how to make our city resilient. Huh? For your information, UNDRR, United Nations uh, Disaster Risk Resolution, already produced some document for us to uh, go through or to refer in terms of how our city can be resilient. First is to organize the disaster resilient. Then number two is to identify and understand the current and future risk scenario. Then number three is strengthen the capacity, then we go for the resilient urban design, uh, then we go for the protective function, then the strengthen of the institutional capacity for resilience. Then uh, quite important is to understand and strengthen the social capacity for resilience. So they should recommend to increase the infrastructure resilience, to ensure the effective disaster response, to expedite recovery and be back better. So this is the criteria that should, we should have in terms of how to make the city resilient. And I think uh, Penang should consider this criteria to ensure that resilience is in the Penang city. So uh, I think these are the important part that I want to discuss or uh, to inform uh, the state government. Uh, basically, we have recommended uh, nine strategies to how to make a Penang in terms of the disaster resilient. First is the disaster risk investment, disaster release fund, and disaster insurance. I think this is important, and this is also the new concept that we still are looking in, looking into it. But I'm talking about uh, disaster risk investment state government also should consider to invest or to give project for the project on the prevention and mitigation project. So at least we can prevent the disaster from happen. Then normally when we do this study, we found out that the cost for response and recovery is much higher than the cost for prevention. That's an important point. Then also talking about this uh, disaster relief fund, as we know that further we do have this uh, disaster relief fund and was uh, controlled by NAMA, but it's really good that the state should have this uh, disaster relief fund by their own. So that during the event that the state 
can release the fund faster compared we have to make uh, another arrangement getting approval all that huh? then the third part is uh, quite important talking about insurance i, I think uh, this one has been discussed quite long but for nama we are try to finalize how we going to handle uh, this insurance especially for the flood, uh, for the disaster victim i think we still in the process of discussing with those insurance association ban negara then hopefully by end of this year we come back with a consensus with the insurance company how to handle this disaster insurance then the second part on this uh, we call this uh, CBDRM, the Community Based uh, Disaster Risk Management Program. I think just now Dr. Imran also mentioning about this program. I think when you uh, refer back to the developed country, especially Japan, uh, this is quite important because uh, when we ha- we carry out this program, we want the community to be ready uh, how to handle how to face disaster during the event especially uh, some of the program that we carry out we will show to the community uh, the evacuation, evacuation map so during the disaster the community can uh, really know uh, where they can escape and also to give the information to the authority and the best part is uh, they should have their own uh, relief team so that they can manage themselves before waiting the uh, uh, relief team from state or from the federal. Then the third one, uh, talking about this integrated flat as a map. As you all know that uh, flat as a map is, is a really uh, useful tool how we handle uh, disaster in terms of uh, to uh, identify which are the most uh, prone area to disaster. But in this case, uh, NAMA would like to propose to the state, if possible, that you can uh, develop this integrated flat hazard map. This integrated flat hazard map is different from the normal flat hazard map, which the normal flat hazard map, normally you uh, do the modeling, then you know uh, the area uh, prone to disaster, but in the parameter is only on the, uh, what you call it, the direction, the depth, the coverage. But for this integrated flat as a map, it's different because we put in the other value added uh, parameter, especially on this uh, identification of the critical area, like the evacuation center, the emergency places, the place of interest, then the education institute, then not to forget uh, those old folk home, open uh, center, then the Georgetown UNESCO World Heritage Site. Because in Penang, uh, we also have this uh, UNESCO Heritage Site, so we really have to protect it. Then uh, I wish that after this uh, integrated flood that the map was uh, developed, so we can uh, present it in the online system that uh, everybody, especially the people, the population of Penang can refer to this integrated uh, flight as a map. <coughs> but uh, in Japan, normally uh, this flight as a map is a uh, risk communication. They are using it as a risk communication in the disaster destruction. And it also, it also a tool for understanding the factor that create the disaster, uh, closing the perception gaps among government, the community, the expert, and helping everyone to make it uh, transparent. So uh, also in Japan, all the PBT was required to develop uh, the flat as a map by themselves and disseminate them to the local resident. I think uh, that one, I think the vision for Penang, hopefully uh, Penang state government will take it seriously. Then uh, go back, uh, get back to the online story map. What, what we really need in the story online study map is the should be the software is our program is uh, user friendly, uh, interactive, then collaborative, and should be on the cloud base, making them available in in the internet. Then this story map can also can be accessed on the desktop, uh, laptop, tablet, and also the smartphone. And then they want the <coughs> number three. 
So number four, we are talking about this uh, GIS platform enhancement. Uh, it's a really tool for disaster reduction. But for Penang, I believe you already have the good system uh, which was uh, conducted by Pegasus, uh, Suraim Rana. But uh, we need to do some enhancement to the system, especially to extend the coverage, then to increase uh, the attribute, then also to update the latest figure, especially on the population and also the uh, uh, completed project by the technical department. So that during disaster, we really can know what really happened and how to do the evaluation on it. Then uh, we go for the number five, We're talking about the early warning system and forecasting for flight, landslide, tsunami and typhoon. So these are the frequent disaster in Malaysia and also to Penang. Then uh, this information uh, dissemination platform to the public. And uh, hopefully uh, for Penang, uh, you are quite fortunate because based on the DID program, there are four rivers will be completed with the flood forecasting system, which is for Sungai Penang, uh, Juru, Sungai Jawi, and Prai. And this forecast system will be ready by the year 20, the end of the year 2021. So these are the contribution from the federal to Penang, but if possible, state government can uh, give fund to the, those other river which is uh, considered uh, flood prone or the disaster prone to the, uh, to the uh, population. Then uh, if possible, this system should be disseminated through website or the SMS. I think uh, Penang alert, as mentioned by my colleague just now, is also in the consideration of using uh, SMS to alert the public. Eh? Then for number six, it's really important that uh, we to highlight the importance of flat as a map of this map, the component of this uh, state such a plan or you call the RSN, uh, sorry, in Ryan, eh? so and also the local plan. So what really happened uh, to produce this uh, flood as a map, you really need the technical agency. For example, in Pinay, you have uh, the ID and also JKR. So they have to prepare this map. Then uh, during the review of this uh, such a plan, they should include this map in the such a plan. So with, the, with this map, so the planner can really uh, plan which area that should be developed, which area that you should uh, carry out the project with the mitigation structure. So that will be the one after the uh, development completed, then the area will be give impact to the downstream, for example. Then uh, with this uh, important of hazard map, it also can avoid the development in the some, uh, you call this uh, sensitive area or the cost sensitive on Askita, in the water catchment and also in the, uh, we call this, hutan uh, simpan, uh, high risk area, then the trial. And also to identify the area by this uh, hazard map. And then uh, on the number seven, uh, we're talking about this proposing uh, disaster risk management specialty in the state level. Yeah? So, Normally, uh, this uh, disaster risk management unit will really em emphasize on this micromanagement, on disaster management. Uh, they should have this uh, flying squad uh, to monitor those uh, high risk areas in terms of what will be coming in disaster. For example, you know that uh, the rainy season is coming, so this uh, unit have to go to the platform area, monitor in terms of this river, lake, uh, station pond, although the technical department already have the staff, but sometimes you need to explore more compared to them. <coughs> then uh, number eight, it's possible that uh, the Penang should have this uh, Penang Disaster uh, Management Center, just like NDCC just now I was mentioned, but uh, just focus on this uh, monitoring, uh, surveillance, then employ uh, the staff with the experience, exposure, especially in the disaster management. 
So uh, <coughs> luckily I was the board board of study UTM and UTM also providing this uh, latest course on disaster management. So they have the joint chair with uh, Japan University. I think it's a good course. I think uh, they should be considered to be part of your Penang Disaster Management Center. So, and the last one, uh, you should establish the disaster policy and guideline in the state level. This uh, policy and guideline is really important by improving and understanding the disaster risk at all level. But uh, for federal level, we are in the final process of producing this uh, guideline on DRR. And with, the, with this guideline, you can uh, strengthen the governance and public private particip participation in the DRR. So uh, we come to our last slide on this uh, closing remark. So I, I hope with this uh, integrated effort and coordination from the federal government and the state government, the resident people and infrastructure and climate change and other nature making that can be achieved to ensure that the concept of this no one left behind make that aims in the reducing disaster risk, reducing the loss of human life, impact on livelihood, improving the critical structure, and last, avoidance of the emergence of this uh, we call it new disaster risk. I think uh, that's all from me, Doctor. Thank you very much. So if you have questions, I can answer later. Thank you so much, Dr. Sabri, for yeah. your very informative presentation. Also, very sound recommendations to the yeah. state government. We will definitely look into, into yeah. the recommendations. Yeah. Uh, uh, next presenter is uh, Mr. Mama Said. Uh, he's from Mercy, the general manager of uh, Mercy. Mercy Malaysia is a non government organization. Uh, they've been involved in all sorts of disaster relief all over the world, not just in, in, in Malaysia. So, Said, the floor is yours. Thank you again, Dr. Sabri. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Honorable Moderator, Dr. Ng Wei, and then thank you for the invitation uh, for Mercy Malaysia for this uh, webinar. Uh, honorable fellow speakers, uh, Datuk Sabri, Encik Imran, and also Mr. Tan uh, and participants. So I've been given you know, the task to, to uh, basically share about the importance of planning in uh, disaster management or disaster response. So yeah, so when we talk about uh, uh, disaster, so just to give like an overview of disaster timeline in Penang. So, Basically, we can see that over the past uh, few years, uh, or for the past you know, 37 years, Penang have been, uh, has not been short of disaster. So there are quite a number of disaster you know, uh, happening in Penang. So some are small and some are quite major. Uh, but of course, I mean, uh, I think uh, most of the time it's within the, the capacity of the state government to, to manage the disaster. Uh, so just to show, you know, some uh, visual of uh, some disaster you know, situation in other parts of Malaysia. Uh, this is uh, from uh, the East Coast flood uh, back in 2014. Uh, so we can see, I mean, uh, this is basically to show some of the issues and uh, challenges you know, we face usually uh, on the field. So in this case, uh, you can see you know, the different type of shelter, uh, standards of shelter. Uh, which uh, maybe for some you think that I mean it's uh, it's okay, but you know for us uh, as responders, I think it's it's really a big issue. For example, if you see picture number one, so there is also considered tents, but then when you report back to the authority that you know you have been distributing this kind of tent, whether it is uh, acceptable or not acceptable, whether they are being considered receiving you know a tent. Uh, or not. So, so this is just you know to give uh, uh, an example uh, in terms of uh, standards in response. This is another uh, picture, uh, just to give an example. Uh, this is like a pile of you no know, flow. Uh, again, during the uh, East Coast flood back in 2014, uh, when we see this, 
I'm sure this is not common in all disaster situation in Malaysia, but you know, sometimes it happens. But we do wonder, you know, uh, is this the proper way of delivering aid, you know, to to beneficiaries? Uh, if this is you no know, acceptable by the Malaysian community or any communities, uh, you know, uh, if you're talking about response. So, so unfortunately, I mean, this does happen. So it brings us to question whether you know it is properly you know plan or, or not uh, when we do this kind of response so uh, going to you know uh, the other issues and challenges so uh, in, in disaster management so of course you know there are issues in terms of gaps and duplications there are areas you know where they receive you know uh, assistance and then there are uh, areas where you know uh, they, they, they have not received anything some areas you know they receive a lot of you know uh, the same thing so it is a, a real issue on the ground basically uh, and then uh, lack of accurate information i mean this is quite common as well uh, in any type of response you know uh, because of uh, how the, it's being coordinated who is uh, in charge i mean this is sometimes not clear and then how information is being shared you know to to the rest of the responders uh, which causes you know things like you know the the the, the lack of standard delay in delivering assistance uh, happens sometimes uh, which I think uh, is is an issue if you know if it's uh, something that is very very uh, serious like for example you know medical services or food aid uh, inappropriate assistance or lack of standard you know from the pictures that I've shown so I mean those are some of the example inefficient use of resources. You know, uh, you have uh, resources, but maybe it's not being utilized or, you know, it's not being mobilized to the right people, to the right person. Lack of clear definition of roles and responsibilities. I think this is somewhat being uh, already been addressed, but I mean, it sometimes happens, especially in major, major disasters, you know. Uh, although, you know, in Malaysia, it's not, uh, I mean, we don't really have that, that kind of disaster happening like on, on yearly basis. Uh, and of course, you know, frustration of providers, officials, uh, survivors uh, in response. So basically, these are the, all the issues and challenges in disaster management. And when we talk about uh, importance of planning, it's basically to address uh, all of these issues. It's basically to, you know, to, to reverse all these issues and challenges and then uh, turn it into something uh, more positive. Meaning uh, from gaps, we, you know, we, uh, how do we you know, address those gaps and so on. So, uh, so a question then whether in Penang we are still facing this kind of situation. So yeah, I think uh, those responders, those who are you know, managing any type of response, they can maybe you know uh, ask themselves and then see whether we are still facing this kind of situation. Uh, just to go you know uh, a bit uh, you know from the three thousand uh, feet view uh, on the international side. So whether uh, they are still facing the same situation. I mean, I can tell you that uh, because we, are, we have been responding to in other countries as well. So this is not uh, common or this is not uh, something that is specific to Malaysia uh, only. So it happens other, other place, in other places as well. Uh, of course, you know, if you go back to, you know, to the, I mean, I'm giving you like a few uh, major examples. Uh, number one, uh, in Rwanda, uh, Africa, back in 1994. So this has led to uh, to what the, in the human sector they call it as a sphere project. This is a, you know, a basically a setting a standard on if you are, you're providing like a, a shelter, how big should it, should it be? So because of the Rwanda issue, you can read about it later. Uh, it has led to this because during the Rwanda uh, crisis, I think uh, the number of uh, responders are quite you know, quite a lot, but still, I mean, it causes like a lot of death at the same time. So I mean, uh, there were some inquiries as well. I mean, why is this still happening? And then Aceh, Pakistan and Haiti, I'm sure, I mean, you have heard uh, of some of those disasters. So the main issues were mainly on coordination. Too many players, but then who is doing the coordination or are they being you know, coordinated properly? And then uh, of course, you know, for the longest time in, in Africa, you know, they've been receiving aid from many, many parts of the world. But there were a lot of questions and issues on uh, accountability. So, so you can look, I mean, I, I put a link uh, uh, in, on some YouTube videos, which I will share with you later. You know, you can have a look. I mean, those, you know, basically are some of the issues being faced by the international communities. 
So in 2005, uh, the United Nations, they, you know, they introduced the Hamilton reform. So it's not far back, it's only 15 years back. So it is very new, although you know, the, the groundwork has been, you know, has started uh, back in you know, 1981. But in 2005, you know, they introduced this Hamilton reform. Basically what they wanted to achieve is two things. You know, they want to have uh, a more predictable response capacity, uh, which means, you know, uh, people, or I mean, having the right type of leadership to lead a response. And then number two, uh, I think Natma uh, touches on this as well, uh, on predictable funding, meaning uh, you have something on standby whenever, I mean, the, the response are required, I mean, you have funds for it. So, uh, and then it has, you know, been used since then. Uh, the SURF, the Central Emergency Response Fund, for any international emergency, it has been used, you know, to, to respond to that particular emergency without waiting for donors to, you know, to contribute to, to the fund. But it is a revolving fund, means uh, countries will still contribute uh, every time, you know, the, the trust fund is almost uh, empty. So that's some of the you know, example uh, on the international sector. So I'm sure some of you have heard about the, the Admir uh, that was back in 2005 and then AHA Center was established in 2011. Another example of how uh, proper planning you know, uh, is required in, you know, in response. So that's why ASEAN themselves as a region, you know, they, they established this because they know the importance of having proper planning in you know, when doing response. And of course, you know, uh, uh, in Malaysia, we have NADMA and then Indonesia BNPB uh, and then in Philippines NDRMC. So these are all, you know, uh, the, the, the local uh, players uh, in each countries. And at state level also, if you, uh, you, know, if you know, now we have you know, in Selangor, uh, Unit Bencana, and also in Sarawak, the State Disaster Management Committee. I think these are two fair examples of, you know, uh, a well-developed uh, state, uh, you know, uh, state uh, management unit in, in, in each state. Uh, so basically, the trend is nowadays uh, response are becoming more local. Uh, people are not, you know, uh, even the UN, the international community, uh, even countries. I mean, they are not or, you know, calling for international assistance anymore when it comes to you know disaster or response, because I mean, uh, I think nowadays uh, states, countries, they have a better uh, resources, they have like better uh, capacity in managing disaster, and this is the trend. Uh, nowadays. Uh, that's why you, you won't see even in major disasters, Indonesia or even the Philippines are I mean, calling for, for, you know, for international appeal. So why a reform in disaster management? I mean, this is important because I think it is very relevant to the importance of planning. Uh, number one, it's because of leadership. Uh, re reform is required because you need to have like a more predictable leadership in crisis situation. You know, you have to have people being trained to be able to respond, you know, not during disaster, you have to train them before, uh, you know, uh, and of course, I mean, you cannot be having like everybody doing the same thing. So that's why uh, in, in, at the international level, they have the cluster approach. I'm sure Natma has also been introducing, you know, the same approach uh, at, you know, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, because it just saves time when you do, you know, coordination. You don't have like thousands of people in one meeting room, rather, I mean, they are you know, focused in their own clusters. Coordination, basically, uh, I'm putting here, you know, partnership-based response because uh, it is, you know, uh, something that we have to consider from the beginning, you know. Uh, partner are required in any type of response, you know. If we consider them, you know, much, much later or during the, 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 the response itself, I'm sure, I mean, it's, it's not a proper planning. So, this is the time, you know, be, even before the disaster happens, we have to consider, I mean, what are the capacities, the NGOs, other agencies, you know, the, the state government, the, the corporate uh, uh, community have, you know, uh, and then how they could contribute. And then, uh, last but not least, it's about accountability, you know, uh, having a you know, standardized response, quality, making sure, you know, the quality of services are at, at par, uh, leaving no one behind and then understanding the actual needs on the ground. Uh, so I think Cik Imran uh, touches on, you know, on the TDRM earlier, Total Disaster Risk Management. So I'm um, just to put it uh, in, in one slide. So basically, uh, when we talk about preparedness, response and recovery, so in terms of planning, we have to understand I mean, who is doing what, where, when and how are they doing it. Because 
uh, some players they are you know involved in not only preparedness uh, but also you know they are doing response and sometimes recovery and sometimes I mean one case they are doing all three. Some players they are only you know involved in response. So we have to understand this kind of situation because uh, this is how you know you you basically properly plan uh, on the capacities that you have at all the different. Uh, uh, response uh, phases, uh, you know, uh, when we do response, because response is not only uh, uh, when we talk, you know, about disaster response. It's on, not only about the the actual response during the emergency or acute phase. It's basically, you know, after and also also before, you know, it it actually happens. So yeah. And then when we talk about uh, response framework, this is something that is very common. Even Mercy Malaysia, we are using the same framework. So this is the project management cycle. Basically, those who are in engineering field or in you know in, on IT, so you would know about the project management, the linear project management, uh, from you know implementation, from you know, planning up to closing of projects. But in the human sector, I mean, basically we are using this as you know as our guideline uh, in res doing our response. So in each phases, you know, uh, we start with our needs assessment, analysis, strategic planning, and then. Once we done with, with the planning, we do resource mobilization, which is the actual response, and then uh, we do implementation and you know monitoring. We make sure whatever we are delivering it's up to par or is I mean get to the communities, and of course we have to do evaluation after that, and then you know we 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 move on to the next uh, response or next uh, what is required next. Uh, these are all the components, all the you know, the components that I've mentioned. You know, the five components. It's uh, something that we have to consider when we do planning so because it not only involves costs uh, i mean or resources but you know it is important uh, for you to consider what is the next step uh, before you know uh, so what you have done now and then how you move on to the to uh, to the next one so so this is just to give like an overview uh, we do this type of training as well for our you know our partners but i mean just to share you know the the type of uh, uh, information or you know policies that we have to to understand in order for us to do our response. Uh, okay, so just to share, you know, uh, this is we are going very micro. Uh, so planning in a nutshell, uh, understanding what are the objective, what we need to address, and then uh, what are the scope because we don't want to do to be doing uh, something that we're not supposed to do, especially you know when we are talking about during the acute phase. We don't want to do something that is you no know, not supposed to be done during the acute phase, uh, because it's just a waste of resources. So that's why you know uh, identifying the scope and boundaries uh, is very important. You know priorities what within the the, the plan. You know uh, we have to make tough decision again. You know you are having certain resources that you need to to spend. Uh, the overall strategy versus cluster activities. Uh, understanding uh, what is required overall in the response and also. How do we make sure that it is being implemented effectively by each cluster? So uh, we have to to plan all of this and also uh, inform individual organizations uh, programming, letting them know about all the you know, the, the things that we have discussed. So in conclusion, uh, this is what I can you know, I can uh, gather you know, from uh, from you know, from uh, from the, the the whole presentation on effective disaster management. I think number one, we need to have like a very well informed. Uh, Leadership, so I think there's no doubt that government needs to lead uh, because when we were trained, you know, in terms of humanitarian actors who are the actors on the ground, so uh, government is always you know the the first and the last resort in in any response uh, because of course I mean if you are talking about country I mean each country has their own sovereignty and then uh, even the UN cannot go into any countries without the approval of that particular country so well informed leadership is required partnership at all level uh, and it must not be on ad hoc basis. It needs to be on a, a pre-planned basis. So you have to engage with partners, whoever is potential you know, to to assist with the response, even before you know, before the the crisis even happens. Uh, affected people, they are not just victim. You have to consider them as responders. So Natma touches on you know, CBDRM, quality based disaster risk management. These are basically the the you know, the the uh, reason why you know we we want to do CBDRM because we know that they are the first responder in any disaster. It's actually the community who can respond. So if you train them, if you pro provide them with resources, they can actually be very, very effective, and it can actually improve how you know, the the government uh, 
uh, respond to that particular disaster. Information and coordination is, is the key. So I think there's no doubt about it. And I think this is uh, one big issue we are having in Malaysia as well. Because I'm not sure whether you know, we don't have enough information, but you know, sharing of information is something that is uh, not being practiced widely, uh, even in response. Whereas you know, when we respond uh, at an international level, this is you not know, the key things that, that usually the United Nations wanted to address. They wanted to know who are doing what uh, in which location, and then what are the needs in any particular location, and also who, I mean, where are the gaps? So this is where, you know, all these agencies, if they know where are the gaps, they will just go there. And then basically you have like an evenly distributed response. And last but not least, I think it has already been mentioned many, many times, uh, invest in preparedness. I think uh, it is very important that, you know, not only we, we, you know, we build the capacity, but we have to, to provide, you know, it's basically it's just funds, you know, uh, funds that you, you have on standby. Uh, to train or for, or for preparedness, but at the same time, if you, know, you put it on standby in case of any disaster. So it can be a revolving fund, what, like what the UN have or you know, any type of you know, uh, disaster relief fund. So in Selangor, they, they have it uh, as well. Uh, so it's being set aside by the state government to any district in Selangor. So I'm sure, I mean, in Sarawak, they, they have the same kind of arrangement. So that is all from my side. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Said. I'll just maybe pick, to pick up two points from your presentation. One is uh, needs assessment and strategic planning that I think that we can agree you know, more because we think that especially with climate change, there will be a lot of things that lot of threats that Penang probably has not faced before, but will be facing. It's not just disasters, but also food security, water security. It would be, I think it's very important for Penang to have a, a view of uh, what are our needs going forward and what sort of planning we should do. Another point that I really want to pick up from your presentation is coordination. Uh, uh, as we know, there are a lot of non-government entities that help when disaster strike in, in Penang. Uh, at the moment, we don't have uh, a standard protocol of how government works with NGOs. You know, it's all on the ad hoc basis. Like you said, we shouldn't have that. So it would be it would be good if our you know to improve our management uh, disaster management Penang, we should target focus on on these issues. Thank you again for giving us a, a bird's eye view of of you know how disaster is being uh, handled uh, internationally and the problems you mentioned at uh, international level. Uh, we also face the same constraints, I guess, in at the state level. So our last uh, speaker is from Suchi, Mr. Uh, Tan. Uh, he will be showing us how a non-government entity, uh, in this case Suchi, uh, has been working very, very hard and uh, uh, engaging community to build their resilience, to give them aids during the time that they need, and also after the disaster, how to sort of strengthen their ability to adapt to, to disasters, I guess. Thank, uh, Mr. Tan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ng, uh, my fellow uh, Batmina speakers, uh, Datuk Sabri, Cik Imran, uh, and Cik uh, Ahmad Said, uh, and then uh, fellow participants uh, for today's uh, uh, webinar. Okay. okay. What I'd like to share today is actually uh, the experience uh, that our what we say the ES disaster relief teams, uh, CG ES disaster relief teams, our efforts in developing and uh, establishing a community engagement in uh, post disasters area. And then this particular example that I'm talking about is uh, focused on an area in Penang that is in the Kampung Masjid Jame Hashim Yahya in Jalan uh, Perak, Penang. So everything actually uh, started with the flood disasters. Uh, uh, in uh, November 2017, uh, there were heavy floods uh, in uh, several areas all over Penang Island and uh, Sebrang Prai. And uh, our, my zone, uh, ES zone, ES stands for East Zone, uh, we are directly uh, in charge of uh, any disasters in the Julutong and Glugor area of Penang Island. So. Uh, during the floods, uh, we were informed uh, by phone call from our city center in Penang, and uh, we responded by uh, getting the my 
team members uh, uh, to provide some uh, daily essential uh, items uh, uh, to the flood victims which were uh, being evacuated to the Masjid Jamek at that point in time. Uh. So uh, every time there is a disaster, uh, Suji volunteers, uh, we actually work according to these uh, five uh, basic principles. Uh. We give aid, disaster aid, we give with respect, and we give something that is practical for the victims and focus, focus on those who are directly involved, and we give the aid directly to the victims, not through any third party. And the most important uh, aspect of aid being given by Chichi is being uh, timely, being prompt and on time. Uh, the part master, uh. okay. So uh, uh, that night, uh, the second day of the floods uh, in November, uh, my team, we got together and, and we went, uh, because we didn't have time, so we sort of like went to a local nearby a supermarket and we bought some daily essentials like uh, face towels, toothpaste, soap, you know, for the, uh, we estimated uh, about 50 uh, flood victims being, uh, staying at the, mas temporary at the uh, Masjid Jame has because their houses were uh, flooded. Uh. So after this, uh, when we found out uh, uh, the scale of the floods in uh, November that year was established very, especially very large. Uh, and uh, we actually, uh, when we were at the masjid, uh, we got uh, some information. Uh, uh, we tried to get as much information as possible and we exchanged phone numbers. And then we, uh, the next morning, we went around. We got a team, uh, our relief team, we went around the area. And uh, this map roughly shows the area uh, that uh, the ES group uh, was uh, appointed to distribute aid to. Uh, this is the, the size of the area. Uh. So on the 18th of November, after the flood uh, water subsided, Chichi organized a large-scale flood relief uh, distribution. Uh, and this was, uh, we had our, for the ES group, we had our center at the, uh, Hanchang College Canteen, and we were able to uh, mobilize over a hundred uh, volunteers. Uh. All our volunteers are local volunteers. Uh. That means they are, they are from the ES region. Uh. The volunteers staying within the uh, Jilutong Global area. And then we managed to uh, get our volunteers in, and then we gave them a briefing on uh, what to do uh, during the flood uh, distribution. So uh, our first stop was at the masjid and then uh, the members of the Karya Masjid, uh, the uh, community members, uh, we actually, they were helping us uh, uh, because we have a name list and we, we work on the name list uh, provided by the Karya Masjid, uh, all the flood victims within that uh, area and uh, we were taken around the kampong uh, area, we had several kampongs to go through apart from kampong Masjid Chane, we have kampong uh, Dodol, uh, and then there's a Kampung Jawa, and then there's another Kampung, they call it the part Kampung ASEAN or something. Uh. So uh, the uh, local residents also have been, uh, they took us uh, along and we went uh, from house to house. Uh. So at every stop, uh, we made it a point, uh, we were, uh, our volunteers made it a point that we are not just going in to give people aid, uh, but we also give it a point that we are coming uh, to tell them that, that there are people who care about you and this aid uh, doesn't actually come from city members it's actually from the uh, donations that we receive from uh, time to time from members of the public uh, 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 from time to time city would uh, have uh, walk-in donors uh, uh, and, and during these floods uh, remember during these uh, floods uh, uh, as the as people are aware that city is doing some relief work uh, uh, we have actually got a lot of walk-in uh, Donors are people who walk into City uh, license office in Penang and they gave donations. Uh, uh, people from all walks of life. Uh. And every time uh, we distributed the donations, uh, our members, we would do it with respect. Uh. We would bow and after that we would uh, put our palms together uh, as a sign of gratitude for the give us a chance uh, uh, to uh, help them. And at the same time also, we would also uh, take the opportunity to read a letter uh, of consolation uh, from our master. Uh. Our master actually is a 
Buddhist nun, uh, Master Chen Yen, she resides in Hualien, Taiwan. Uh. So after uh, this photo here is, uh, uh, during the distribution, we also distributed, we didn't distribute uh, cash, but we distributed cash vouchers. Uh, so you can see these are some of the victims uh, queuing up at the banks uh, about uh, the following week. Uh. Cash the aid that we give. All in all, uh, this is a summary of the amount of aid that she gave. Uh, yes, we are just one of the groups. Uh, we gave uh, aid in the uh, Jalan Perak region. We also have other teams that uh, are giving aid in Georgetown, uh, in Pai Trubong area, uh, in the Tolong Bahang, as well as on the mainland, uh, Sebrang Prai, Bukit Matajam, Bukit Tengah area, which were hit by the floods then. Uh. Okay, so what was important? was the what of the efforts uh, we not only when Chichi go in to give aids to uh, flood victims we also uh, plan ahead uh, that uh, what should actually we do after the the floods you know it's not just we just go there and give a, a one-off uh, flood relief we have uh, have we arranged for a meeting uh, with the Karya Masjid uh, a few of us got together and we met up with the uh, main uh, committee members of the Kara Masjid and we sat down to see like, what we could do like, uh, as a post-disaster activity like, for Sichi and what we and then we actually had a hard to hard talk with the members of the Kara Masjid. Like. So subsequently after the uh, the meeting uh, on the 14th, uh, they, we, because during the meeting, we asked them, say, okay, now you're writing officially to Sichi and see what. So there was this request. Uh, and the uh, carrier, they wrote in a letter to us, uh, telling us uh, the scope, uh, the, the number of kampongs involved. Uh, we had Kampung Dodol, Kampung Masjid, Kampung Jalan Makrum, Kampung Africa, uh, Africa, not Asia, and uh, so, uh, some of the areas of Jalan Perak. Uh. So they actually made a request uh, for some flood, um, Disaster equipment lah. Uh, this is the this as you can see from this uh, letter uh, that I attached here. So uh, after that, uh, we said okay, we would go in to build the uh, give you some equipment, but we need a place to store it uh. So uh, the masjid AJK they they allowed us to say okay, they identified the certain the back part of the masjid, and then we say okay, this part we will build a store. So we went. We had our members. Uh, volunteers uh, they went in they surveyed the place okay and uh, we use uh, the technique uh, and uh, materials that Sushi used for building prefab houses in disaster area and this is uh, roughly what the front of the store looks like and we had the uh, uh, and then we had the, the wish list from the carrier uh, they wanted uh, rescue boats so we ordered the boats uh, got ready some life jackets and rescue floats uh. And then all these uh, items and the uh, store was officially handed over to the uh, Karya Masjid on the 8th of July in 2018. Uh, at present at the ceremony was the local Adun as well as the uh, senior officials of the APM, uh, the civil defense members uh, who are directly in, in charge of the uh, helping the Kampong folks uh, in terms of floods. Uh, 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 they are in charge of the rescue. Lah. So we, on that day also, we also donated some um, multi-purpose floating beds ah, uh, to be used ah, uh, when the masjid uh, hall, prayer hall and the conference rooms are used as temporary evacuation centers. Ah. So uh, this, this here in this you can see the, the APM, ah, they uh, use not only their boats but they also use these lightweight uh, boats for their rescue uh, disaster uh, training. Lah. And uh, these photos here show the actual uh, use of the uh, life jackets uh, as well as rescue floats and light boats uh, in the Kampong area during the floods of uh, 2018. And uh, how uh, we also went in to the uh, masjid uh, to help the uh, volunteers, members of the APM as well as the residents uh, 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 assemble the multi-folding uh, beds. Uh, uh, we put up all the beds in the uh, prayer hall area as well as the conference room area. Lah. And as a token of appreciation, uh, we, uh, the Karya, they, uh, they gave a special umbrella for us to give to our master in Taiwan as well as a letter of thanks in, uh, in Bahasa. Lah. And this, all, all this was uh, reported and the master actually was very uh, happy when she uh, made it and she actually made a point to uh, 
say thank you uh, over one of our uh, sermons, uh, uh, daily sermons in Taiwan, over our international Thai television. Uh. Okay, uh, so what is important for us in Suji uh, as part of our effort uh, to build up uh, post-disaster resilience is we feel that it was actually important not just to go in and help and then uh, come in later on later when there is floods, but I feel that we need to really go there and see how we can help the uh, residents more. So we had a dialogue session and uh, this was arranged uh, by the Karia. So at that particular day, we went in and we had a dialogue session. We, we made an effort to introduce them to Suci and introduce our missions to Suci and especially explain to them uh, where we get our funds. Actually, the funds that we get to run our charity missions and uh, disaster, it all come from members of the public. And we also told the uh, residents, uh, we are here because we also want to find out how we can have any, find any common areas where we can cooperate with them. Uh, we want to bridge communication and establish good bonds with the residents. And we actually want to tell them why we want to go into the villages. Because one of the uh, mission of Tsuchi is the mission of charity. We want to help the poor and the needy. Lah. So, but then again, we say we go in also with full understanding and with a lot of respect lah, for our uh, mutual cultural and uh, religious uh, differences. Lah. So, uh, so and, um, that day we had actually quite a big crowd. Lah. Most of the residents, uh, they turned up and the whole session was delivered in Bahasa Melayu. I remember that time I, have to, I have to, uh, uh, actually had quite a number of questions. Lah. Uh, from the thing, but I think what was important was the, the turnout. Uh, we were very happy uh, with, the, with the turnout. Uh. So, after the turnout, during the dialogue session, I actually I invited the residents, would you like to come and visit us? Uh? So, many of them put up their hands. Uh. So, we arranged for them a one day visit uh, to look at our Tsuchi Dialysis Center in Jalan Logan and, and visit our Tsuchi Recycling uh, Center. Uh. Actually, at the recycling center, we actually wanted to share some ideas for our future activities, which we hope to uh, do together with the residents. That is to uh, encourage them to do a bit of recycling, lah. Uh, that is, that, for example, uh, weaving baskets from uh, recyclable plastic covers, uh, and collecting uh, pet bottles. You know, uh, like see, we have a, a branch in Taiwan Tai Technology which makes uh, eco blankets, uh, uh, from um, uh, materials, uh, uh, the basic material is the, the PET plastic uh, or mineral waters. Uh. And then the, we also show them how to actually, uh, in times of non-flood, uh, how the multi-purpose base could actually be folded again into, into chairs, you know. So this is quite it's something that can be uh, folded and kept away, uh, tucked away in one part of the house. Uh, and it is not, uh, it is very resistant to water, like can be washed. Uh. Uh, even if it uh, get uh, dirty with flood water. La. So uh, these are photos from the uh, one-day tour. And uh, after the one-day visit, la, uh, we conducted a health screening uh, campaign. And this was uh, done by the uh, TIMA, TC International Medical Association volunteers, our volunteer doctors and nurses. Uh, they came and then we... Uh, we had like a free health screening for the uh, residents. All, all they need to do is register with the Karia Masjid. Or uh, that day also we welcome uh, walk-in uh, residents, uh, and we give them uh, free blood test, urine test, as well as uh, we had house calls. Uh, our volunteer doctors made some house calls to uh, the homes of uh, families uh, uh, who had. Uh, uh, bedridden, uh, old folks. Uh. So our doctors went in house to house. Uh, uh, we have a team of doctors. Uh. They went in quite early while the uh, health screening was done in the uh, in front of the masjid. Uh. So uh, on that same day itself, uh, while one the Pima group were having the health screening, uh, we had a Gotong Royong. Uh, and uh, this was a joint effort uh, between Tsuchi and the Karyan Masjid. And uh, we wrote in the, we also invited the uh, APM, the Angkatan Pertahanan Awam, the civil defense volunteers, as well as the local residents and our volunteers from the ES uh, region. Uh. So uh, it was also an opportunity for us to visit the Kampong, you know, not just to 
No, that's like the last time we visit there was after the during the after the first where we go and distribute it. This time we go around just to say hi to everybody and everybody chipping in to take care of the cleanliness uh, uh, of the kampong. Uh. Okay, so you can see happy faces uh, after the uh, Gotong Royong. In fact, the after the Gotong Royong, the Karia, they prepared vegetarian lunch for our volunteers. Uh. Uh, they uh, ordered uh, actually lunch for our volunteers, for CC volunteers. And then uh, last year, in 2019, uh, we had a pre Hariraya house painting project. Uh, our volunteers did the painting, uh, but we only had, uh, we went, we, we painted three houses uh, prior to Hariraya. Uh, the three houses uh, were families uh, identified by the Karya Masjid, uh, uh, that their house did a good repaint painting for the uh, to Hari Raya, Prat Hari Raya. And uh, uh, these are the houses after we did managed to paint the ground floor. La. And then uh, apart from this, uh, we also uh, asked them uh, what else can we give them for Hari Raya. La. So uh, we asked their wish list. So the, one of the house residents told us they wanted some clothes. Uh. So Sichi then went around and then asked, we went to the three houses and asked them how many people they are. Uh, asked them for their uh, shirt size and dress sizes and whatever and then we bought uh, uh, dresses, uh, new clothes for the family members. Uh, so if certain families have more, more children, they will get more bags. Uh, uh, they will give them a, a, bought a set of new clothes for Hari Raya. Uh. And uh, uh, in last year also, after uh, during Hari Raya, we went visiting but we only visited the uh, houses of the uh, AJK members. Uh, here with the chairman of the uh, Karen Masjid. Uh. Okay, uh, then uh, what was especially uh, very memorable for all of us was our Chi uh, 1013 campaign. Uh. In Chinese, it says uh, a good day, a person. Uh, this is our annual uh, donation campaign where Chi volunteers go on the streets of, uh, of Penang and we collect donations from uh, members of the public. Uh. So this year, uh, last year, last year, we uh, we used the masjid as our base, and uh, we waited for the uh, Zohor prayers to finish up. So during the Zohor prayer, uh, the it was uh, the announcement was made to the congregation that Suci is uh, uh, collecting uh, donations. So we waited after the prayer session. Everybody came out and they uh, gave donations, and then uh, the the residents also. Uh, they took us around and we went uh, again door to door, but this time we went door to door to uh, collect uh, donations. Uh. And uh, we actually uh, were overwhelmed by the warm and uh, responses of the uh, local residents. Uh. Uh, uh, how everybody uh, gave. Uh, it's, uh, it's not, it's most, most important is the giving from the heart. Uh, we can actually feel the, uh, the love uh, and the, the charitable heart of everyone. Uh. Uh, we just go around show them the boxes. Some people will just uh, have a few instances that they chase some of our volunteers because they just left the house and then they, they saw us from behind and then they, uh, some of them chased after us and uh, to just put the money into the uh, donation boxes. Uh. Okay, so uh, this is a very uh, a memorable photo uh, for the launch. Uh. Actually, we launched our 1013 from the Masjid Jamia and then you can see here uh, was very meaningful photos uh, because this is evidence of how uh, we have, uh, in a certain sense, uh, we have uh, able to bridge hearts and uh, minds. Uh, and uh, and we, are, we are aware, uh, we are not just one team, uh, not just one ES, ES team in this particular area, but we are many. Uh, uh, there are so many other Chichi groups all over uh, doing the same thing. Uh, uh, we are doing our best to establish a good relationship with the uh, uh, teams. Uh. And this is the Motivation. Uh, uh, this is a sincere advertisement from our master. It says uh, that gets to see volunteers motivated. Uh, when those in suffering can't come out, those who are blessed, uh, we should just walk in to help. Uh. Uh, so all of us, I think in a certain sense, uh, uh, all the organizations are helping uh, disaster victims. We are actually people who are very blessed uh, because we are the ones who are blessed and we are the ones who are strong and able to help those in need. Uh. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, my sharing for today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tan, for sharing very good examples of how engagement with the community doesn't just stop when the disaster is over. 
So the purpose of uh, continuous community engagement is to, you know, make them reduce their vulnerability so that they can face with the disasters better in the future. So if all of you can bear with us or the audience in you know, for maybe 10, 15 minutes, we are overrunning a bit, but we have a few questions. I think I would just throw out to all the panelists uh, um, without, you know, directing any question because we do get tough questions. Uh, I, I hope Mr. Iran is prepared because a lot of them are obviously related to how prepared Penang is in relation to climate change, in relation to better uh, communication and, and, and planning. So if all the panelists can perhaps show yourselves and then we will, I will start the, the questioning. So I will maybe split into two sections. So the first section, we have questions about the uh, early warning system. And Dr. Sabri, please feel free to jump in as well because you were stationed in Penang for a long time as the head of JPS. So uh, besides early warning system and retaining walls, you know, are there any green-based practices in, in dealing with landslide issues in Penang? So that's, that's one question. Another question, uh, uh, related to disaster in, in Penang's uh, flood. So it's, we know that JPS at the uh, federal level had come to Penang uh, and work, trying to work out a flood hazard map for Penang. So it's NADMA working closely with other uh, agencies like JPS to, to work on you know, the mapping that, that you have presented before, especially flood hazard map in, in Penang. So maybe Dr. Sabri, you want to uh, have a first, have a go first? Yeah, uh, thank you, Doctor, and so thank you for the question. Yeah, uh, let me answer the first, uh, second question first. So uh, I agree. Uh, the flat as met in Penang was prepared by the federal, okay? and also some part of the small area was prepared by the state. So we have combination. So normally what, what we do, we combine all those flights of mat and then we, we use it as a same preference to do our planning. I mentioned just now, uh, for flights of mat, we can identify which area was prone to the disaster. Okay? So with the information, actually we can plan well what we should do in terms of this fairness and also the mitigation. Then we can, can, uh, we can come in to propose what are the mitigation measures. But in the case of flight, normally we have two types of uh, measures. One we call it a structure and non-structure. For the structure, normally we have this uh, proposal to provide a pond. But in case of Penang, you have very limited area. So normally we do suggest that you have to uh, construct a deep pond inside your uh, private land or reserve land so that we can store water during this uh, heavy rainfall. And uh, as mentioned just now, uh, another uh, gorgeous uh, structure measures is to provide a barrage or a floodgate uh, so that we can uh, mitigate those uh, sea level from coming into the land. Huh? So we do need this structure measure because we don't have enough land in Pulau Pinang. Because uh, when you try to propose a, a big strategic pond, you have to acquire more land which is very costly. So then we talk for this uh, non-structure. As mentioned just now, we still need this uh, early warning system to alert the population uh, when is the disaster is coming. For example, like Sungai Pinang. I do agree, uh, Sungai Pinang is very frequent flood area. So we, if we have this forecasting system, we can uh, do the simulation to forecast the flood in seven days, and then to give the warning in three days, so that the people can get prepared very well, uh, instead of uh, giving uh, warning in 20 minutes, one hour. So they don't have time. I think, I believe, Suci uh, has to prepare already supply a boat to them, when we give them at least three days warning, so at least the boat can be mobilized to those areas, so they can move early instead of uh, pasting the flight one or two hours. But in our philosophy, uh, 
that better that we move the people by boat, by lorry, sorry, not move by boat. It's possible. Then that thing can really happen uh, for, let's say, for three days only, so we can move them by boat, instead of, uh, by lorry, sorry, instead of by boat. It's more convenient, so they can move their things, then can uh, allocate their, uh, what this, a vehicle to the higher, higher, higher land area and so that's the perfect uh, combination of uh, non structure and structure measures. Okay, uh, back to the first question on the last slide, I believe, uh, Doctor. Uh. So actually, uh, when talking about last slide, we do have a lot in the island area, especially. So the mitigation measures that normally we did is only for this uh, vertical wall when the incident happened. So we have to provide these temporary measures and also long-term measures. Like for example, the temporary measures, we do provide this, uh, we call this the, uh, the rock one, the, the one called it, uh, the rock, then we feed it, we tie up with this uh, wire mesh, gabion. Huh? Then for the long-term, we did uh, prepare this uh, permanent uh, wall for them to protect for long-term processes. But talking about the green base, uh, normally we have to rehabilitate it back those uh, exposed area by putting some uh, geotextile and green material then we encourage that we put the geotextile the <coughs> what we call this the seed uh, we spray back the seed then those uh, what we call this uh, grass can uh, grow in into those uh, exposed area i think that's all for uh, uh, landslide and also for the flood uh, doctor thank you Thank you, Dr. Sabri. Uh, Mr. Ryan, do you have anything to add to these two questions? Uh, Mr. Ryan? Sorry, you are muted. Uh, thank thank you. You. Yeah. Do you have anything yeah, yeah. to add to these two questions? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Actually, the, the state government already recognized that uh, one of the questions is the climate change of the sea level, right? Uh, it's uh, one factor that, that we cannot avoid and it's uh, real and we have to face it. Lah. Does the state government already had long uh, term uh, goal to tackle this problem? Uh, and for your information, the, all the current and uh, future project of the state, uh, either with uh, JPS or JKR, has taken consideration of this climate change factor and sea uh, rising factor. So meaning that all the design of structure, of trenches, the uh, drain, uh, and many more are well equipped and, and well prepared with this uh, issue. Also, uh, uh, all the developers in the island are compulsory and mandatory to take uh, this factor of uh, sea, uh, rising, uh, sea rising and uh, climate change into, uh, into account of all their projects. So uh, for example, uh, JPS, uh, all their current project, uh, either uh, doing a barn or drain, has taken into account of this uh, climate change. Meaning that before this, the uh, the height are uh, two meters maybe. Uh, now 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 is two point five something like that. So that's one of the any things that uh, the step by step uh, are doing. Uh Thank you, thank you, Mr. Imran. I, you already went one, one, one step ahead of me. I haven't asked you, <laughs> but yeah, one question is about the sea level rise, and yeah. that's another. Uh, the last question that, that composes of two parts that is mm. open to other panelists as well. So, mm. uh, what's Penang's strategy in terms of uh, preparedness uh, mm. uh, on communication engagement plan for the community-based uh, disaster risk management program? So that is the program that. Uh, that Sabri and Said have mentioned. Do we have a communication engagement plan for uh, implementing that? And the second part of the question is: So, what do whether we have the disaster resilience, uh, you know, uh, uh, DRR, DRM plan, and whether they are available for the public view? So, in terms of uh, getting information about the potential threats, uh, the vulnerable areas, and mm -hmm. and strategy to, for adaptation. So it's, it's open to all panelists if you have any knowledge on this. Okay, uh, regarding your first question, uh, Shiwe, uh, our communication with the people of Penang, actually we done with uh, all the YB uh, and MPKK, uh, all, all engaged with uh, the people of Penang in terms of ideas and also what need, needed to be taken uh, into action whenever disaster occurred in, in their places. 
also we we using a pinning alert to inform all uh, pinning pinnings uh, pinnites uh, what uh, the proper precaution and steps uh, to be taken if an, uh, if disaster happen in their area. Also uh, regarding I mean maybe to the second question, uh, pin, uh, pinning state government also uh, in uh, in process of developing this. Uh, uh, unit pengurusan bencana or in English uh, disaster management uh, unit which uh, my friend uh, Mr. Syed said uh, already taken into ni in Selangor and Sarawak. So if uh, but there's a few steps to be taken uh, especially uh, perjawatan which is uh, <laughs> uh, hard to get these days. So uh, if we manage to settle all this uh, intercom maybe we have a proper uh, team, a unit to manage uh, this uh, DRR or DRM to, uh, and maybe uh, we can share for, but for now uh, I think Penang don't really have this uh, DRR uh, ni. Uh, 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 ni. So mean, uh, after this uh, unit uh, form maybe we can uh, try to look into the DRR for the state. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Imran. Uh, does anyone want to add anything to that? Yes, yes. Sabri, say yeah, if I can can add a bit, uh, so two things. Uh, number one, uh, in terms of the the DRR module that you know, that, that you asked just now. So, uh, we we had a meeting uh, with Natma last week uh, with the post disaster uh, division. So basically, uh, I think uh, uh, Natma is no is currently you no know, uh, developing you no know, uh, a module to train uh, communities. Uh, in terms of CBDRM or disaster risk management, and I think uh, if you know if uh, this came into reality, I think it's going to be uh, implemented uh, or at least being you know being uh, being uh, operationalized. I mean nationwide, so all states can use you know, the same module. So I mean they are asking like a few NGOs, including uh, some government agencies, you know, to assist you know the development of the module and come up with something that is. Uh, that is more standardized, you know, uh, so that you know everybody is talking about the same thing, even though it's being delivered by different different agencies, organization. So I think this is a step uh, forward by by NADMA, which I think uh, all the states, uh, government can can support. Uh, number two, I've I've seen uh, a draft report by you know, by Plan Malaysia on Bukit Bendera. This is a perancangan kawasan khas, and uh, I think uh, they are also Plan Malaysia are also you know, moving. Uh, to the right direction because in the report, in the draft report at least, you know, I saw there's uh, one component on Pelan uh, Pengurusan Risiko Bencana. I mean, they are doing this uh, at the moment for Bukit Bendera uh, in Penang, uh, but you know, they, they have already considered you know, the CBDRM, the, you know, the, the risk management uh, part of the, the development. So which is uh, uh, you know, a step uh, forward by the state government having this uh, implemented because I think at the end of the day, I mean, Disaster should not be treated as you no know, as a response or you know during disaster alone. I mean, it should be considered uh, uh, at every you know at every level and during any phases, including during development. So, if you are doing development, uh, I mean, of course, I mean, development can or cannot be or maybe you know be the cause of you no know, certain disasters. But you no, know, as long as it is being considered in like uh, during development. So, as, as I think, I mean. Uh, the you know, uh, whoever is in charge, I mean, are doing the right thing, and I think uh, if they are future disasters, you know, in the areas at least, you know, it's already been considered, and uh, the impact will not be as huge as you know, uh, if it's not being considered. So I think I just want to share those two items. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Said. Uh, anything else to add from the panel? Well, I just want to add. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Said, for answer my question on behalf of my Yes, I agree. As, not, as mentioned by me just now, the DR policy and guidelines still in the process of number to produce and we targeted by end of this year, then we can have those policy. And I agree, uh, we did form a small committee to discuss on this by inviting those experts from the related field, for example, at the lecturer, the NGO, and also the Basira. So hopefully by this guideline produced by the federal, maybe the state can use as a guide for them to use in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. So I think, uh, Mr. Mirai, is there anything you want to add? Oh, Mr. Tan? Uh, nothing. <laughs> okay, right. No, Thank it's you. okay.
Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank all the panelists again for giving us your time and sharing your experiences and your the information. But before we go, uh, we need a favor from all of you at the audience as well. So we need to take a group photo.